Hello gamers, it's Nice, and I hope everyone's sailing to a new world is having a nice day. Today, we'll discuss the state of MMO New World in 2023, my experiences with this game, and what to expect with the new expansion, and finally, the future of this MMO. I've logged a lot of hours into this MMO, and a lot of you perhaps actually know me from New World PvP content. This review will come from the perspective of a player who started playing New World with the launch of their free expansion Brimstone Sands in October of 2022. Take note of this as it will be relevant for the rest of this video. While this isn't always my main MMO per se, I truly enjoy it. And with the upcoming launch of the first purchasable expansion a year from its previous expansion, I thought this would be the perfect time to finally give my review of Amazon Game Studios New World. But first, I would like to thank everyone who decided to become YouTube channel members. I truly appreciate each of you. Also, a big thank you for everyone who remembered to subscribe and like the video as it really helps as we push towards that 10K goal. Let's get into it. Now, before we discuss the current state of New World and where it's going, we must first remind ourselves of where it came from. As previously mentioned, I did not play New World at launch, and quite frankly, that perhaps makes me one of the luckiest gamers in the New World community. Let me explain. New World launched with an insane amount of player numbers, so many that the queues were just as insane. This was the MMO that everyone jump shipped off their current MMO for. They wanted to give this new Amazon project a try, and fairly enough. After all, I mean, the MMORPG genre is in quite a stale state. I mean, come on, we're all desperate. This is why I'm desperately waiting for Ashes of Creation. New World peaked at over 913,000 concurrent players per Steam charts. This is insane. What's very good is that New World is only available on Steam, unlike other MMOs where it's kind of tough to track, you know, exactly how well the population is doing because of, you know, different launchers and platforms. But don't worry. We got more Steam chart data coming up. As you may have heard, to say New World needed a little bit more time in the oven is uh, quite the understatement. The game launched with a horrendous amount of issues from lengthy server queues, bugs, exploits like immortality, people finding out that they can put unsavory images in zone chat, and gold duping glitches, and perhaps worst of all, the most horrible grind in recent memory. When I first started playing New World, I often was told horror stories by veterans of the game about what they had to go through before the Brimstones expansion, which, you know, reworked the new player experience and added both a new weapon and a new zone. I won't dwell too much on the past, and I promise there's positivity in this video on its way, but as you can see from this Steam chart, well, New World did not have a great launch in terms of player reviews and most importantly, player retention. Now, no game is going to retain its launch numbers. That's common sense. People move on. But as you can see, not many games fell off quite like New World in comparison. This was quite a disappointing MMO launch. You really only get one shot at first impressions, and this is true in the gaming industry just like it's true in other aspects of life, but even more so when it comes to MMOs. We've of course seen amazing comebacks like that of Final Fantasy XIV, and of course non-MMOs like No Man's Sky or Cyberpunk, if you will. New World would continue to bleed players until the announcement of their Brimstone Sands DLC, and that's when I received my first New World experience. Now, with that sad horror story of an MMO launch out of the way, let's talk about the launch of Brimstone Sands and lead into the current New World that we know today. I was impressed as a new player with this action combat MMO, even though I think it has among the worst character creators in MMO history. This was a little different for me coming from The Elder Scrolls Online, which I've played and loved for years. In New World, you don't have classes. It's a classless MMO. But rather, you choose from two weapons, each with three different skills to utilize with their respective cooldowns. The combat felt amazing to me once I got used to it. And as you might have noticed from the footage in the background, I am indeed a PvP main. I actually have over 100 PvP tracks completed. I love all aspects of MMOs, but PvP is typically what I settle on as my personal endgame. I was fortunate to start this journey with a couple of friends, and we were able to level together essentially, and did it simultaneously. While the grind was slightly improved from launch, it's still quite a lengthy one in 2023. 
And while I'm not one of those people who want everything handed to them and I want to hit max level in two days, I did have a slight issue or two with the grind in New World. First off, the grind and leveling experience as a player, in my opinion, just is not fun. I'm a firm believer that leveling can be fun in a game and you should take your time and enjoy the journey. I did this to up about, uh, I want to say level 50 and then I just got burnt out. The level cap is 60, by the way. I'm a firm believer that leveling can be fun in a game and you should take your time and enjoy the journey. I did this to up about level 50 of 60 and got burnt out. Luckily, at that point, there was a repeatable group dungeon that people constantly spam for a good amount of XP. The reason I was burnt out is, well, I just personally didn't find the story of New World great. And a lot of the questing felt like, like pointless fetch quests and I wasn't immersed at all. I remember doing fetch quests for one of the starter zones in a village where I ran to a farmland, did something they asked me to do, then I went all the way back to the quest giver and you're putting in a lot of miles and then that quest giver gave me a quest in that same area and then I went back and then just back and forth and it just seemed like I could have knocked out two of those tasks at once I don't know it was just really redundant is the best word I can think of and this is strictly a matter of my opinion but I just didn't enjoy the leveling experience I've had a lot of friends and members of my community try the game and they rarely made it past levels 30 through 40 because the grind wasn't fun and especially people in my community they were wanting to do the pvp that I was doing and they had a hurdle to get over in order to accomplish this. This brings me to one of my main critiques about New World. PvP should not be locked to endgame. My friends and I didn't get one 3v3 arena queue or outpost rush queue while leveling until we hit level 60, even though our gear score would have been scaled up in those game modes. And gear matters so drastically in the game that a level 45 or level 50 player fighting a 600 gear score player could barely scratch their armor open world. Like it really, really makes a huge difference. And um, I had a lot of friends quit. And I'm always like that friend. Everyone has that friend who's always trying to put you on to something new, whether it be something like a Netflix show and you hear them say something like, oh, don't worry, it gets good after the first season. I'll just wait it out a couple more episodes. I promise it's the best show ever. And But in this case, the MMO is awesome once you hit max level. So it's almost the same thing as that friend putting you onto a new show. And that holds true. I truly enjoy New World's PvP. While there was once an oppressive ranged meta to the point where you just step outside of your outpost and you just get gunned down by muskets in like three hits, the devs consistently made efforts to combat that and they have been very awesome with combat balance updates this year. See, I told you there was some positive coming. The official New World Community YouTube channel constantly puts out updates. Some focus completely on PvP and PvE, of course, too, though. I truly believe these devs are determined to turn this MMO around and are good for listening to feedback. New World has had some good seasonal events and recently added paid optional season battle passes. Something else recently added was the ability to transmog gear. Something that probably should have been base kit, but a very welcome addition as I felt I literally had to purchase skins from the cosmetic store to even look remotely presentable in this game. No offense to whoever was designing the base game armor, but yeah, the cool stuff is definitely in the uh, cosmetic shop, so I had to partake. Judge me later, but you know, how my character looks is important to me. So in my opinion, this was another small quality of life feature and I'm glad they finally have transmog. New World has always had Outpost Rush, an instance-based PVP objective game mode. However, they eventually added a 3v3 arena. Recently, we finally got another 3v3 arena, which was really cool to see. I'm hoping we finally get another Outpost Rush map in the future as playing on this same map for years and years, I imagine the player base is gonna get tired of that. Although, to be fair, Outpost Rush has seen a lot of great quality of life updates, just little things. Um, there's actually a ghost that you can kill to freeze the other team's score, and range people would just nuke it from a distance. They didn't even have to go into the objective per se. They recently fixed that, and there's just so many other things they're doing, rewarding you for playing the objective and, you know, just capturing things. I think it's really cool. Another huge quality of life feature added was cross-server matchmaking. This made a huge difference as things would die down around midnight or so for a server, and you could just no longer get queues for Outpost Rush because of the population. However, now this isn't as common with cross-server OPR. There has been a lot of PvE content as well. Perhaps the most notable was New World's first trial. I enjoyed the PvE in New World fairly, and I tanked a lot of dungeons in my time. New World is soon making buffs 
buffs to ranged DPS, which always seemed like it lacked and just was a little bit less efficient than the melee counterparts and PvE specifically, that is. While tanking, I really enjoyed the threat system and it really made you manage your cooldowns and you weren't just a tank pressing one cheap button and then that ad is taunted to you forever. You had really had to be doing damage or really making sure you uh, time your cooldowns to taunt and generate threat respectively. And also high level mutation dungeons feel really good and satisfying when you complete them. While I find the overland of new world, the open world PVE that is questing highly dull, and lackluster, New World's dungeons are done very well. The audio, the cinematics, the story of the dungeons, just the overall vibe in there just feels very well done in my opinion. As previously mentioned, New World has an upcoming expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth. This will be a paid DLC unlike Brimstone which was free. And remember, Brimstone gave New World a decent population spike, although be it temporary. This DLC will bring a lot including its main attraction, Mounts. That's right, New World is introducing a cool, new, innovative, never before seen feature in MMOs that will change the genre forever in mounts. Okay, I'm just kidding, but yes, mounts are coming. There will of course be horses, but dire wolves and lions are expected as well. The developers mentioned other mount types might be added in the future, however. There's also a new weapon in the flail. Now this seems cool because it's a one-handed weapon that can be used with or without a shield. They've also reworked the first light zone in the south after having it closed off the players for a patch or so. There's also another new expedition which comes with a new ultimate or heart rune as it's referred to. I always call it an ultimate. They are even adding more open world PvP content and I'm a huge fan of open world PvP content. Finding another player flagged in the middle of nowhere or at a fort is just so much more fun and so much more of a thrill than any instance based thing that you can do. Open world PvP done right is a great thing for MMOs. I feel this turn is thrown around loosely though. To me, open world PvP is PvP allowed in the same world that you would PvE in, where combat can just happen anywhere. The same world as in it's not instance or it's not restricted to just a specific area of the map. For example, the Elder Scrolls Online Cyrodiil PvP zone is not open world PvP really. And when you can find good PvP or get in a PvX situation randomly, nothing replaces that feeling for me in a game. Now, if you stuck with me through all the negative critiques in this video about the questing and unfun leveling and other aspects of New World, you'll be happy to know that the main storyline is getting revamped due to player feedback. This is great and I cannot wait to see the difference it makes in this upcoming expansion. We will also see various PvE and PvP balance and system changes I'm excited to test, especially the change to the resilience pvp perk so it looks like new world has a lot of future potential content wise but this begs the question is it too late can new world ever recover from its disastrous launch should you play in 2023 i'll give my full honest answer and feedback here i don't think new world will ever reach even close to what it had near launch. I also don't feel this expansion will bring back even as much players as Brimstone Sands did. I think we can hope for a similar population spike at best, but even that's doubtful. I think this is the best case scenario though. I truly hope we do get a boost however, the population has remained stagnant or rather just continued to lose players over the last 9 months uh, aside from the launch of season 1 which wasn't exactly a net positive really considering the decline that the previous months had. Now, should you really play in 2023? Uh, my answer might surprise you. Yes. Yes. I personally feel players whom played at launch are virtually scarred from the experience and carry this narrative that this is still the same new world that they played. Despite the best efforts of the devs, I don't think there's anything they can do about that and instead have to focus more so on getting in new players like they did with me via Brimstone Sands. The game feels and looks great and honestly, these devs have absolutely been smashing it in 2023 with listening to player feedback. I just hope it's not too late and that players give it another chance, especially if you haven't played since launch, because trust me, it's a completely different game. Is it the best MMO out there? Probably not. But personally, I believe it's worth your time, especially if you're looking to switch things up. I think it kind of has something for everyone. I really do recommend this game and you guys know I'm not exactly a pure New World YouTuber or some Amazon affiliate or affiliate of AGS, so there's absolutely no bias here. <laughs> I just truly enjoy the game despite what the critics say. 
I love outnumbered PvP and I love MMO PvP in general and it does not feel neglected in this world. The combat seems so fluid and dynamic and it's unique almost in that basically everything is in AoE due to the game using hitboxes over a target system or a tab target system. You have to like aim and hitting even with melee attacks can feel rewarding and hitting someone with a bow from distance that's even more satisfying. I wonder if New World could use a Final Fantasy 14-esque style rebrand or rebirth to convince people to come back. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, click like and please subscribe. I cover MMO Ashes of Creation as well as the Elder Scrolls Online and New World here on the channel and um, I'd like to... I'd really like to post more New World content based on you guys' feedback to this video, so just let me know in the comments. Um, do you disagree with anything I said? Will you be trying New World? Will you be playing the expansion? Did you play at launch and you're considering finally giving it a try? Uh, did you play at launch and you just really not willing to give it another chance? Let me know. Of course, all these were just my opinions, so please be respectful. Thank you once again to my channel members. Look forward to you guys in the comments. Peace.